All right, so this is the last video I'm gonna have make on this focus because I'm pretty much at the point now where I'm ready to send it on to a new owner who probably needs it more than I do. Um, let me close the sunroof for lighting purposes. Let's just talk about the short story we have with this on Kyle's cars. I got the car and the first thing we did was we uh, just kind of looked through it, checked the paperwork on it, did that normal new car thing. Um, removed a little bit of contraband if you uh, saw that video, um, but that's all been taken care of. And then the next thing we did was uh, filled the air conditioning uh, and fixed the leak. The air conditioning system was leaking just a small amount um, and we went ahead and sealed that up and we recharged the system so now the AC blows nice and cold. Uh, one thing about it is if you're a potential buyer and you happen to see it, see this video, uh, the compressor still has a little bit of noise. Um, but it works fine. It's just a little noisy probably because the previous owner ran it with low refrigerant in it. Uh, but I don't think it's uh, something that's going to go bad anytime soon, anything like that. You just uh, have to be mindful of that. I went ahead and replaced the wheel bearing. So the passenger side wheel bearing was really bad. Uh, driving down the road, it had a horrible noise, like a, I can't even explain, like a grinding noise. And I tried to get it on camera once, but I just wasn't picking up the audio. It was just the rest of the, you know, regular car noises. We're kind of drowning it out for a camera microphone, but it was very noisy to me. So I went ahead and replaced that, put a new bearing in there, um, which we made a video about. Uh, one thing that I don't have a video on, but that I did was I replaced the front tires on this. Um, so it has pretty nice front tires. The back tires are good and inspectable, but they're not as new as the front ones. <clears throat> and then now in this video, we're replacing the quarter glass. So that part of it will be all good to go. And just to run down some of the info on the car, it's a 2002 Ford Focus. ZTS uh, mock audio edition so basically it has the upgraded audio system in it with the factory subwoofer and all that fun stuff so it's not something that somebody threw together from Walmart parts or eBay parts uh, this is a legitimate uh, sound system all good to go so um, start it up real quick so let's uh, look at everything here. Right now there's no check engine light, no ABS, no SRS lights, but the battery light is on. I checked the voltage uh, of the system with my scan tool and um, yeah, if you can maybe hear just that little whine from the air conditioner, but I checked the voltage on that with my scan tool and it's reading 15 volts. So what I think is going on is it's uh, throwing that light because the voltage is too high. Um, but it's not like crazy high. Possibly in the future you might have to replace the alternator because that's going to stress the alternator over time running at 15 volts all the time. But. Uh, for now, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, shouldn't should not be a problem as long as it doesn't go up over 15 volts, which it hasn't. So there's that. The like I said, the air conditioning compressor does make a little rattly kind of whine noise, um, kind of just from time, you know, just from being used with low refrigerant. That's why you have to keep your AC charged. Uh, if you're going to use it because it will damage that compressor over time, but it's not major. It currently works um, I'm not making these videos to fix stuff that isn't broken. So that's the deal with that um, 
and other than that it has a current Virginia inspection until September uh, and 176 774 miles 176 774 so not super high miles but not low miles either uh, this car still has a ton of life in it engine starts right up transmissions good stops goes turns good it might need an alignment in the near future uh, but otherwise this is a great car I'm glad that you guys watch these videos and I hope you find them helpful and uh, yeah let's get on to replacing that window all right so let's uh, get going on this uh, window here so if you remember in the first video I made about this car uh, this window was uh, just covered up by uh, duct tape and uh, <clears throat> I mean, obviously that's not ideal, so I've bought another window. I bought it brand new on eBay. It was only $52, I think. It was pretty cheap. And uh, they wanted $75 at the junkyard for it because I was gonna need them to pull it off for me. At the junkyard, when they pull off these types of windows, they have a machine that heats up the glue behind it to melt out the window. So there is a fair bit of labor involved, so they do have to charge a good amount for them. Uh, but I was able to get it $25 cheaper on eBay, and the seller was actually about 45 minutes north of me. Uh, so it w didn't take any time at all to ship. I think he sent it on Monday, so it took like a, two days to ship, I think, a day, two days to ship because he's so close. Um, so we're looking at this window and uh, I've got some indications of how this broke. As you can see, there's a couple of little small scratches around it. My guess is, is that somebody locked their keys in the car and they decided they were going to break it and reach in and unlock it. <clears throat> if you ever have the problem where you lock your keys in your car, don't break this window um, because they're not any cheaper, honestly at least on a used, if you're going to buy it used, it's not any cheaper to replace this window parts wise than it is the actual regular roll up windows and it's actually labor wise much easier uh, in my opinion to replace these windows because you just take apart the door panel and it unbolts. But that aside, let's uh, go ahead and get started here and the first thing I got to do is remove all of the old glass. So. I've got a trash can underneath here, you can't see it on the camera, but I don't want to get glass all over my yard, so that's what I'm doing. And I'm not using just a regular flathead on this, I'm using kind of like a, a big chisel tool. You see the end of it's pretty big and flat, so this isn't a regular screwdriver. It's kind of meant for this type of stuff. I've already cut my hands. Um, usually you don't have to worry too too much about um, about tempered glass cutting you. Uh, it literally is designed to break into beads so that they don't have any sharp edges on them. But unfortunately when you really really jam your hand into it like I just did, you can still cut yourself pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and throw on some gloves to prevent any further cuts or anything of that nature Got all the old glass off, and in the process I got most of the old adhesive off, which I'm not sure if I think that's a good thing or a bad thing. I kind of wanted to leave a small layer of adhesive in it, but I think we'll be fine with, with it just the way it is. Um, let's 
scrape up a little bit of this extra so it's all even anyway. And honestly, I don't even know where you would buy uh, a scraper like this, uh, but this was the perfect tool for the job if you can find one. I'll try to find one on Amazon and throw that link in the description for you guys that are getting ready to do this job yourself. Um, so I'm still gonna have to go ahead and vacuum out the inside of the car, but at least I've got a good start on it. Okay, so before I made this video, uh, I've only replaced, like actually installed, one uh, window before. I've removed a bunch when I worked at the junkyard um, with the aforementioned uh, the aforementioned glass burner tool. Um, so I knew kind of what was behind this and how this was going to come out. But the only window I've ever replaced was a back window on my F-250 uh, before this one. And sorry, I'm still bleeding like a stuffed pig. So on that F-250 window, before I uh, went to put it in, I went to the parts store and I asked the guy in the parts store what he thinks that, what he thought I should use, and he pointed me to this 3M stuff. It's a uh, uh, molding and trim adhesive type of thing, and it didn't look like it was a bad idea, but I uh, bought it and that stuff was pretty much bad it wasn't it didn't it didn't work at all it's uh the yellow window and trim adhesive it probably works for some people in some situations but for a window like that big and everything it was just too hard to apply it was really stringy and gooey and it wasn't thick enough honestly so the only reason that window didn't fall out is because it was bolted into the cab of the truck. There's no doubt in my mind if I put this glass in here with that product, it would fall right out of the car. So I went back. First thing I did was I went to Reddit and asked about it. And I got two people that pretty much commented on it and uh, did not give me good advice. They pretty much were like, well, ask the people at the parts store which I even said in the Reddit post that story that happened to me. So for them to tell me I should ask somebody in the parts store, it's kind of funny to me. And then uh, another person was like, you should call a body shop and see and ask them what they use. Well, here's the thing. Whoever commented that probably doesn't work in a shop because every shop I've ever worked in, we're not about answering questions for free. So some shops might do it. Some small-time shops might you know, talk to you on the phone for a few minutes and tell you how to fix your car. But that's not uh, what they're in the business of. They're in the business of doing the work and, you know, for people that can't do it themselves, not telling people how to do it themselves. So, like I said, I don't doubt that I probably could have done that and I probably could have got somebody to give me an answer that way. But, you know, it's just a respect thing. I wouldn't want to be the owner of a shop and be answering my phones for people with questions. Um, that's what YouTube is for. That's why I'm here now. Because this is my way of answering your questions. So, um, I ended up going to the parts store anyway, and I said to him, hey, you know, I'm replacing a window. And I thought for sure he was going to offer the same product to me. And he didn't, because they didn't have any there, as it turns out, at the time. And then he said, well, the only thing I got that'll work is Gorilla Glue. And the fact that he would even suggest that just proved to me that he really didn't know what he was doing. Um, I was like, yeah, all right. And I turned around and walked out. And I went over to Napa. And Napa does have, like, actual glass uh, adhesive stuff, stuff that's made for glass. And uh, But it's like $19 for a whole tube of it that you put into a caulking gun. And I only got this one small window. There's not really a good reason for me to go and spend 20 bucks to you to for something I'm only going to use a third of. So instead, uh, I bought this stuff. This is a uh, 
Permatex uh, black silicone. It says on the package that it's good for glass. Uh, it's just going to have to be a test for me. I'm not going to drive it down the road until I know that it's firmly in there. I believe this will work. There was a guy that commented on Reddit uh, with an Amazon link, which I will put in the description, the product, that is a 3M uh, glass uh, adhesive that's like the professional stuff, finally. And uh, But I don't have two days to wait. I really want to go ahead and get this car finished up, and that way it's done. So I really wanted to get something local today. I couldn't even buy that particular product in person today. So uh, instead I got this stuff. Um, I think it was like five dollars for this tube so you know less less per dollar but this is more than I need already so shouldn't have a problem the guy that did comment on reddit uh, did say that I should uh, get the glass completely clean which he must have assumed I had a used glass this is brand new so I shouldn't have any trouble and I should let the adhesive cure for a, like a few minutes or something so it isn't super slippery when I put it on it'll just like it'll set and it will be good which makes a lot of sense uh, so I'm not really sure if I want to put the adhesive directly on the glass or directly on the car I think what I will do is I'll put it directly on the glass so that way uh, while it's uh, really soft and drippy I can hold the glass flat and then once it cures enough for me to tilt it, I'll tilt it and stick it right into place. I don't want it to get too hard. Just kind of wait in a second. All right, I'm just going to throw it on. Because I still might need to adjust the placement. So, now I'm pushing on it pretty nice and firm here. Hoping that it'll seal. I really don't know how long I'm going to have to stand here like this but hopefully not too, too long. It's holding itself in, but I wouldn't slam the door right now because I don't want the air from when I close the door to push it. I'm gonna get inside though and look, move that little weather stripping back a little so that the glass can sit all the way down. That made a huge difference. I guess I was on top of that weather stripping just a bit. So it's staying there. I'm going to go grab a little bit of painter's tape so I can tape this up there and hopefully this doesn't fall off when I walk away. All right, so the next thing I guess I'm gonna do is go ahead and clean out this car completely so that I can post it for sale. And uh, some of you guys, uh, I think I might use this video in my Craigslist ad for it. So some of you might actually be the potential buyer for it, maybe not. But, uh, cause I got nothing to hide. I mean, I pretty much bought that car just to do some projects on for YouTube. Uh, I mean, it's not really something I'm trying to make money on here. Um, just going to sell it for what it's worth and get back what I have into it and have some good videos. Because I don't make any money from these videos, so just basically going to break even on that car. But I really hope that you all found it uh, very useful. The information that I've uh, shown quite useful.